How's it going folks? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be bringing you something a little bit different today. I'm going to be chatting to Ross Goodwin, the guy who runs the Boys Analytics page. You can find him at Boys Analytics. Did some really good stuff, some really good insight into some players that player, uh, Celtic might sign and some managers who potentially could be getting a job as well. So if you want to follow him, you can get them at Boys Analytics. We're going to be talking about three positions, centre back, centre mid and strikers. Let's get straight into it. Ross, how are you getting on? Uh, I'm getting on great, Ender. Uh, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. So, again, you're one of the many people who's involved in the analytics community when it comes to Celtic. I think it's starting to grow, grow a little bit. What got you into the analytical side of things? Well, I'd originally not really been involved in it much in the past year, few years, but I've done data at like university and things like that, and I was looking for maybe a new hobby to start up, and I've always followed Celtic well, at first uh well since i was young so i'd been listening to like the huddle breakdown and started getting into data a bit more and i decided to, uh, to go and get my own y scout account and start uh, making my own content so yeah really end on the juco and alan really uh the inspiration for it originally so yeah very happy i joined the kind of data and celtic community uh on twitter been a great experience so far i'll take 20 percent of any earnings that you get in the future for <laughs> getting you into it so what we're going to be doing is essentially looking at Celtic squad at the minute because I've spoken about it multiple times. We're in, in for a worrying enough period because the spine of the squad is going to be gone. It's not obviously Christopher Iyer is still there and uh, there's not many rumors picking up that he's going to be leaving anytime soon, but I, it's, it's only before time that he will leave. So we're going to be talking about Christopher Iyer, Scott Brown, and Odson Edward, the three positions that they're going to leave. And you've been doing a lot of scouting on your boy analytics page in terms of players who could potentially come in and be good replacements, but also value for money as well, because that's one of the key keystones off the analytical side is finding value in the market. So I guess, will we start with the back to the front and go with the replacement you think would be good for Chris Ryer at centre-back? Um, yeah. Sure. So uh, th I did this uh, small scouting report on this player quite a while back for the Twitter page, uh, but he'll be a lot more familiar to people in Scotland now, I'd imagine, and that is uh, Ofri Arad of uh, Maccabi Haifa. Uh, he actually just made his competitive international debut for Israel against Scotland the other night and put in a very good shift. I think uh, most people have noted that Israel's defence were pretty much untroubled and looked quite comfortable in the ball. I think he was a big part of that. Um, he would have 100% successful defensive duels, four out of six aerial duels. Um, he was also involved in a lot of forward passes and had a high per higher percentage passing average than usual. So as a centre-back, he's quite an interesting one. He plays his right centre-back for Maccabi uh, Haifa, who are top of the league in Israel and have conceded the least amount of goals. Um, he would have probably been playing in Europa League with them if it hadn't been for a very unfortunate draw, which saw them play against Spurs. Uh, earlier on this season, which is maybe quite an unfair tie for a team like Maccabi Haifa to come up against at that that stage in this competition. But no, he plays his right centre back, but he has he's very versatile. He can play at, he's played at the left centre back role this season as well, much like Ayer has been a right footed um, centre back playing on the left side. So he can play across the, the back two positions. Uh, also against Israel, we've seen his versatility again playing as the left centre back in the back three. So this is the kind of player we want at Celtic. We want players that can play across those back three positions uh, with ease and comfort, much like Christoph Ayer. Um, I've also tried to kind of match him up, kind of, especially on the ball with Christoph Ayer. I feel like it's going to be quite a big loss if we lose quite a lot of ball progression. Mm -hmm. So centre-backs like uh, Chris Ayer, like, I've done some radars with him where I put him and compare him to the top five leagues in Europe in terms of like um, progressive runs. He, goes off the scale because he has more than anyone else. So Ofri Arad is clearly not going to be progressing the ball quite like him, but he does actually progress it a lot more than um, players like Julian and Welsh. Uh, he's got 1.64 progressive runs per 90 minutes. I mean, it's a lot lower than Ayer's uh, 4.22, which is just a ridiculous number to begin yeah. with. But it's, a, it, it's much higher than Christoph Julian's and Welsh's, who are both sitting around one. So mm. we want to be maybe looking at a player that's a bit more mobile. So the main issue people might have with Ofri Arad is from the sources and from watching him last night, he is only six foot tall, which is maybe not what everyone wants to hear from a centre-back. But it's actually quite interesting. So that 
that I was trying to, as well as matching them up with fire, it's kind of like matching up with what Welsh's main qualities are, which is this kind of mobility uh, to deal with players. He's maybe not great in the air or, or, or maybe on the ball as much, but he's very mobile and can cover a lot of ground. So Offrey Ara is the same as this, but the big difference with Offrey is he has a very good um, aerial uh, dual win rate uh, in, the, uh, in the mid-70s, which is, so he's got 73.01% aerial dual win rate uh, this season, which is the same, um, which is about the same as Chris, it's actually above Christoph Ayers by 3%, which is quite interesting considering he's only six foot tall. I think Welsh is even six foot three, and he's only, he's at about 73% uh, in that metric as well. So he's actually providing a really good aerial um, defensive jo uh, defensive job for his actual um, maybe small demeanour. Um, yeah, well, I suppose one thing that you are looking for for Christopher Ayer, and, and you point to it as the very first thing that stand, uh, jumps off the page for him is his ball progression out of the defence. I don't think there's a, a centre-back in that I've been watching anyway that carries the ball out as well as Chris Ferreira. At times, he, he dribbles as far as the opposition box. So you kind of do want someone who is has the ability to do that to to an extent. You're obviously not going to get the same as Chris Ferreira, like a replica of him, but you, you need that. In terms of that aerial duels, does that take into account set pieces or is that just in general match play? That's just in general match play, so that's everything. So is there any sort of metric that you've been measuring in terms of even uh, Maccabee Haifa's uh, set piece, uh, the amount of goals they've been conceded in that sense? or uh, No, I've not tracked that. But from what I've seen, they've only conceded, I think, 20 goals so far this season. So they're on track to be, th that, that's quite generally a usual number for a dominant side. To, if they're dominating that much in the league, they're not going to concede many goals. I think the team in second place have only conceded one more goal than them. Um, but I've not looked at their, their specifics of how they're conceding goals. No, I've not. And he's he's 22 playing in the Israeli league. So generally, does I don't, I don't know, does Weisgott give you a, a valuation? But in terms of valuation, uh, he think, sounds like he would be within Celtic's price range anyway. Yeah, so the, the Israeli league is not, the most coveted league in the world. I think um, when that tier system comes out, when if we do ever come into the Brexit problems, Israel isn't even on the six tiers. So getting these players after, if these Brexit rules ever comes in, is going to be completely impossible, in my right. opinion. They're going to, they don't get really any points at all. So this is the summer to do it if we're going to maybe raid the Israeli league one last time. Um, in terms of like record transfers, I mean, Soros is quite high up on their uh, record transfers. They, there's not like a huge amount of money going around in the league. I think transfer market hasn't valued about six, seven hundred thousand. So he's definitely well within our range. He's a player that's probably at Europa League level already. He's 22. Uh, you want to bring him in and develop. He's not an 18 or 19 year old coming in. He's a player with a, around 100 games at first team football with a dominant side like Celtic. So he's going to have that experience of needing to win every week, challenging for a league title, as well as all the, the previous skill set we went through. Uh, I also highlight that uh, also similar to Ayer, he has quite similar um, deep completions as Ayer. So that's maybe getting into that uh, final third and producing maybe, a, a, I think it's a, pa a, a pass that isn't a cross that goes into the danger area within 20 yards of the box. So he's um, uh, producing 0 0.38 per 90, whereas Ayer 0 0.43 per 90. But if you look at Welsh, 0 0.09 per 90. So you're getting much more similar, maybe aggressive uh, passing data as well with, uh, with uh, added. So I, I think he would be a very good prospect. Uh, I don't know how comfortable I'd be if I'm coming in as the left-sided centre-back. I think this is a rare opportunity to maybe find that um, left-footed player. But if he's a player that can come in maybe behind Julian or cover Julian's space until he's back and play the left centre-back role, it's definitely the kind of player we should be looking at that's versatile across the back line. Yeah, he definitely sounds good and he's sort of um, left field as well and generally these players are good value for money if you if you do scout them correctly. In terms of the centre mid position, so obviously Chris Fryer potentially could still be at the club next year, but one man that definitely won't be is Scott Brown. So we're going to need to fill that void and considering our midfield at the minute, we, we have a lot of tens, but not, not a lot more else. We will need a, an out and out centre defence midfielder. So, you've highlighted someone that Celtic will be familiar with, and that's uh, Igor Carrot and the Ferenc Varos uh, midfielder. 
Yeah, so Igor Karatin's been having a, a really good season for Ferencvaros. Um, he he actually only recently, I think he'd recently signed from Zoria, who I'm sure people might remember his Europa League form of recent years has been um, a wee bit more impressive than people might have expected. Been quite a stubborn team to break down, and he's uh, definitely been part of it. He was definitely part of that, which is what earned him his move. Um, so Ferencvaros, he's had a, a very good season. He's um, quite similar to Brown, like in, uh, things like defensive numbers, but it's um, much like what people maybe like about Soros, it's much more maybe his passing numbers where we maybe want to look at. Um, so he's on the ball about as much as Brown, fair and back as much like Celtic, uh, a dominant side. It's one of the kind of prerequisites I try and look at players that are in these dominant sides so they know that the pressure's on, you need to win every game. I always think that's quite an important aspect. People forget maybe coming into the, a pressure cooker like Celtic, you want these players to be used to needing to win every game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to note is, so when looking at this player, his heat map's quite interesting. Brown tends to cover quite a large area of the pitch, both the wide areas. Uh, Carrington Ker- uh, doesn't do this. He is very central. He's in front of that defence. He doesn't want to be drawn out into wide areas. He's covering that central area, and that's his main role. Um, we've seen the issues this season with uh, Brown maybe getting caught pressing, coming out into wide areas and leaving holes and behind it being exploited. Uh, well, I don't think this would be an issue uh, with uh, Carrington. As well as that, he's actually 26 years old. So when we're replacing Brown, we don't really need to be going for a prospect because the prospects there, Soros the prospect. He's the player you put in when we don't, uh, maybe against your Hamilton's or bottom six sides to develop him into the next uh, central defensive midfielder. But uh, Carrington, 26, Ukrainian international. He's only, he's only got the two caps and they were quite recently. Uh, but it shows the level of team uh, player he has. He's got Champions League experience. He's got Europa League experience. So he's the kind of player that we want to be maybe looking at. I think transfer market have him valued at 2.5 million. And it was, it, in my opinion, it'll probably cost maybe a bit more than that to maybe bring this type of player in. But if we're replacing what what, what would be described as the most important cog in our machine, it's maybe mm. a place where we should, should be spending a bit more money. So. Yes, especially since that's the weakest part of our game as well. If we if we do want, I, I know, I see I, I, the problem with these is that there's a lot of changing going to happen and we don't even know what the manager who the manager is going to be and what the style he is going to play. But if if we take this in the Celtic season at the minute, it's our fullbacks are the issue because we don't have any cover in centre mid. Yeah, so it's really going to be a big job for the next manager coming in. This, this rebuilds an, an insane task and uh, <laughs> I hope the fans are very patient with whoever comes in because it could be very mm. rocky at the beginning, which is something I, I have been quite concerned that mm. no matter who the manager is, there's going to be a thrown... Uh, throwing them under the bus almost immediately when uh, I think it's pretty clear to everyone the task is almost impossible. Patience but, uh, but, is definitely not a trait that is well known for Celtic fans. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping, I, I think fans may give a bit more leniency, but the, these Champions League qualifiers are coming up in July. I think it's July 20th. We're going to be playing maybe a Galatasaray, a Rapid VN, even the uh, Sparta, Prague, uh, Sparta Prague who put eight past us. So it's quite a, <laughs> it really is a daunting task uh, when you start actually looking at it. But um, these are the kind of players we need to be looking at. So in terms of physical profile, Igor Carrington is six foot two. That's uh, Celtic's one of Celtic's big issues this season. We're a very small team, mm. um, especially in comparison to the Scottish League. So we've had some real difficulties um, and really uh, competing aerially. So this would help even defensively. So in aerial duels, he's winning more than Brown or Sorrow. He's in the 60s, whereas the other two are in the 50s. Uh, defensive dual win rate, he's higher than Brown from this season uh, as well. Um, he's blocking more shots per game. Um, he's got the same around around about the same number of interceptions at five. So he's really a defensive focused player that looks to uh, dictate play from deep. Um, so so as, as well as that, I'd say he's a, so he's actually he's he's got a lot of goals on his record as well, but he's their penalty taker. But he has actually got a few headers as well in there. So he's actually a threat in the box. In terms of progressive runs, he's kind of between Sorrow and Brown at uh, 1.33 per 90. Sorrow's up at 2 and Brown's at 0.92. So it's maybe finding that balance of a player that's going to sit there and let maybe McGregor and Turnbull do their business mm. uh, at the other ends of the park. Um, in terms of his passing, is he? are you getting the sort of idea that he is a win the ball back, give it to the nearest centre midfielder to do the job, or does he have many deep-lying progressive passes? 
So the thing is, when, when I've watched him, he, he likes to kind of, when he is forward, he does like to kind of push the ball in behind to the striker. He's very good at kind of the clip ball in behind, which is maybe something Brown, what we've seen him do before, but he wasn't the best at it. Uh, I think, interestingly, his through passes per 90 is uh, significantly higher. Through passes are generally something that lead to high XG chances. So I think he's 1.07 per 90. So he's doing about one a game, whereas Brown's about 0.6 per 90. Um, in terms of passes to the penalty box, similar to Brown. Uh, key passes per 90, similar to Brown. So he is much more your defensive-minded player, your physical um, hard man in the midfield. He's looking to win the ball back. Um, but I think based on how he plays positionally, he's very disciplined. He doesn't want to move away from where he is, which I think is very important for the next manager coming in. He's going to want someone to sit in that position and actually cover the centre backs because it's been uh, it really has been in my opinion our main issue this season. Um, I think was it, uh, the toxic combinations gets talked about uh, when you're on the the Huddle podcast and things like that. Uh, I think having him in there will offer stability. He's going to be able to win the ball back. He's got he's got a good physical profile. He's good in the air. He's going to be able to get the ball uh, out to your McGregor, your Turnbulls, or whoever your wingers, or whoever your fullbacks will be. So I, I think he's um, got a great profile for Celtic. Uh, I do. And most importantly, if he does keep his position, then that avoids Conor, uh, Cal McGregor having to fill in for him and he can actually play his actual box-to-box role. Same with the defenders coming out and actually trying to fill different voids for different players out of position. If he's there, then he kind of does that himself. Moving forward then to the front man, Odson Edward, he's still at, at Celtic, but he's highly, highly doubtful that he'll still be at Celtic Park next year. And Albin Ejeti has proven that he can get goals, but is he the most reliable in terms of what he's adding apart from that? Probably not. Patrick Klamala, you may as well forget about him being part of the squad in terms of his game time. And then Lee Griffiths, who is just not good enough for this standard at all. So we need a striker. Um, who are you looking at for this? Well, I'm looking at uh, Mohamed Bayo. So when I first actually bought Wise Scout in the first day, that's I clocked Bayo very quickly when looking through the data. Um, I, I do love looking through the French uh, League 2. I think it really is a breeding ground for top talent, as we've seen the years before. I think as well, especially in comparison analysis, it's been quite easy to compare. Is he good enough for Celtic? Because we've actually seen uh, well, the Kuden Bayo is there so we can see a player that maybe we've judged not good enough for Celtic and compare him to Mohamed Bayo, who's, I mean, obviously he's performing a lot better in quite a lot of key areas, which is what we're looking for. So uh, Bayo has scored 17 goals this season, he's got four assists, and that's on 17.17 XG and 2.94 XA. So there's no overperformance there, which is always a good sign. That's one of the first things to always, uh, that I would always look for. So he's performing around the mean, which is what, uh, which is quite good. So uh, he's playing for Claremont Foot, who are currently second in the division. Uh, he's 22 and he'll be turning 23 this year. Uh, he's six foot two, and he's uh, quite a he's quite a big built guy. He's got a good physical profile around him. I'd maybe compare him closer to maybe Dembele uh, mm. rather than an Edward. I think Edward's quite a quite a unique type of player that Celtic just aren't going to get hold of again. But going for a player who's more in the mold of Dembele, I think is much more achievable in terms of what Celtic should be scouting for. So. He's going to introduce a bit more of a physical profile to Celtic, which again, much like uh, Carrington, something I've been looking at. I think it's, it has been an issue, uh, especially defensively, where a player like Bio could be defending that front post area and providing us a lot more cover there. I think we've had players like McGregor even doing it of late, which is madness. Um, uh, so in terms of how he scores goals, so obviously I watched every single goal he scored. So it's not what you would expect from a six foot two target man striker. Um, he has not scored any headers this season, which I find quite interested. But I think this might be more of a tactical thing from Claremont. Uh, they seem to focus very much on low crosses. I think you can maybe count up eight or nine goals that Bayo scored that are coming from low crosses, finding space in between centre-backs, uh, getting space in the box and getting the ball in the back of the net. A lot of these goals are coming from very uh, quite central areas and inside the box. Um, not that many long shots, which is always good to see. Um but I'd still say, like, comparing them to Edwards, so in the XG per 90, uh, that's Edwards at 0.74 and Bios at 0.63. So obviously there's some gap there, but you'd expect that in terms of Edwards' ability and where he's going to be going off to. Uh, interestingly, Bio though, so if we're, we're, we're wondering about can he step up? So in the season previous, he made his breakthrough season in the third division in France for Dunkirk, um, where he was um, producing quite similar numbers as he is now. 
I think I've got them here. Yeah, I don't have them actually on me, but he was over 0.5 XG per 90 for Dunkirk uh, as well and got them promoted. So they're actually in the league um, with Claremont this season. Not doing as well, obviously, without him. But uh, the most interesting thing I found from watching his play there to now is just how much bigger he got. Like He's a, he's a very big guy. He's a powerful runner. Uh, I think he'd be quite a difficult player to stop once he's got moving. He's got beyond you. So he can actually be coming on to crosses. Quite interesting, like for a six foot two striker as well. He's kind of like you, it's kind of like what what I thought a jetty would be, the kind of Gary Hooper. He is in the box. He is he is running across and trying to get crosses into the net. It's kind of maybe what you'd maybe call Edward's biggest weakness, as he's not very good at anticipating maybe running onto the crosses and things like that. I can see them often uh, go by him or he cuts or he holds his run looking for cutbacks. But uh, Bio is um, looking to really get onto the end of the ball and get the ball in the net. In the net. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the other data, so, look, so touches in the box per 90, very similar to Edward, around 4.8 per 90. Uh, key passes per 90, 0. 0.44 for Bio, 0. 0.53 for Edward. Um, that's good numbers for the striker. If we can look at Vakun Bio, he's at 0. 0.07 per 90 for Toulouse. Mm. So it's quite a big quality difference on the ball. So the Clermont are playing 4 2 3 1 with Bio as a target man, essentially. But he's not really playing as a target a traditional target man he's getting the ball and holding up but if you look at his heat map he's actually covering a huge swat, a huge area on the park he's coming right he's coming left to try to get the ball bring other players into play and then run off players so he's actually quite an interesting player to watch he's a lot more di- his physical profile doesn't really just <laughs> just violate how good he is at other things in his game I think the I've highlighted um, the loss index uh, here which is quite interesting so loss index is the amount of times you lose the ball uh, divided by, I think, uh, successful attacking actions like dribbles, crosses, shots. So you want that number to be as low as possible. Mm-hmm. So Edward and uh, Mohamed Bayo have it around. So Edward's at 2.37, Bayo's 2.84, but uh, Vakun Bayo, 5.04. So he's maybe losing the ball a lot more and not doing as many things successfully. So I think that's quite a good indication for the level of player uh, Mohamed Bayo is. Uh, he's uh, probably not. He might be around about the same age as Edward, but obviously he's a bit younger in development stage, just due to where he is in his career. Um, I think also quite interestingly, his passes to the penalty area uh, per ninety. Edward's at two point one three. We know he comes out um, deep quite a lot, collects the ball. And we have Bios at around one point four. So he's also doing this kind of similar role, probably maybe with less um, quality players around him. And yeah. Vakun Bio in the same league is at zero point six four. So I'm getting all the kind of right signals. He's kind of in the ballpark of a similar type of player. Maybe not as technically gifted as Edward, but I think that's difficult. But I think he's a player, if you're maybe looking to try and find the next uh, Musa Dembele, he's a player I'd definitely be looking at. Next Musa Dembele, that sounds good to me. Um, <laughs> in in terms of his dribbling ability, I know you, you went through that index, but in terms of like the actual game-by-game game data, is he as good a dribbler as Edward? From that, do you think? So, I, I, no one's no one Celtic can feasibly get. I think it's going to be as good a dribbler as Edward. But the data is quite good. So Edward's um, completing six is attempting six point four three dribbles per ninety with a forty three percent success rate. Uh, Mohamed Bayo is attempting three point five dribbles per ninety. So he's not as a, attempting as many dribbles, uh, but he does have a higher success rate at them than Edward at around forty five percent. Uh, we can see the issues like this lack of dribbling has with Bakun Bio. He's a, he's only attempting 1.91 dribbles, so you're way down at the other end of the spectrum. So I think he is very good in the ball, and I think he uses his uh, physique and powerful running to try and um, make his dribbling more effective. Uh, whether he's, te- I don't think he's going to be ever anywhere near as technically good as Edward, which maybe not what people are wanting to hear. But um, when I try and do these, I'm trying to be realistic on can we feasibly afford them? Can would they want to come to Celtic? Is it a step up for them? Um, and I'm getting that another player like Edward. I mean, we got him after Dembele, which was maybe absolutely ridiculous luck. Maybe you could call it a good scout at the time. But we've got to be looking for a player we can develop into these players more often than not. Mm-hmm. I think we've been unfortunate. We signed Ajeti, um, who, in my opinion, had a decent profile. Maybe it wasn't, uh, who knows, with the coaching, the training, what, what he's been asked to do. Is it suit, suit him? Um, did he actually suit being in a partnership with Edward? Like, uh, there, there was a lot of questions around him and if he sh- and maybe next season he's going to come good, who knows. But we need to get more of a guarantee in and I think Mohamed Bayo gives us more of a guarantee of goals 
uh, than a jetty does at the moment. Yeah, and I th- yeah, that that that's the caveat for all of the Celtic squad at the minute is that this year has been such a shit show that you, you really want to hold your judgment on some players until next season, until we see who's in charge, until we see what proper coaching does. So before we finish up, then that's Igor Carton, Mohamed Bayo, and Ofri Arad are the three people you think could be decent enough signings. And again, this is basically you judging you seeing their data and judging it it's not it's definitely not a guarantee that these guys if Celtic signed them would be instant successes uh no no I don't don't want the the mobs coming after me if we did sign them and they were but no looking at the data I'm trying to profile players maybe we we can feasibly get so players we can feasibly get are could be hit or miss they could be people like Soro who, who are showing good data and maybe a lower league uh, and could step up and trying to give some evidence that they have stepped up before so why not do it again uh, th- things like that just trying to profile players that I think we could sign rather than profiling players that we're just got no chance of signing or they're costing 10 million pounds because that's just not realistic mm-hmm. I, I would say that everybody who's listening to this or watching it knows what your page is called anyway but for those who don't what is your page called and what do you do on it uh, yeah so my name is Ross Goodwin I run the boys analytics account so uh, check out on Twitter uh, give it a follow and you can have a read through any of the scouting reports or maybe manager profiles I've done over the past few months. And uh, I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, thanks stuff. again for having me on, Enda. Cheers, Ross. Chat to you later. Appreciate it.